Namaste. I am Malini Vishwanath with my shishyas at Rag and Rhythm. We welcome you all to an art talk. Let's walk this talk with artists from across art forms from varying parts of the world. From Riga in Latvia, set on the Baltic Sea, home to many concert halls and museums, joins Mr. Albert Pinces, someone whom we have known since our Darul Atar al Islamia days, an art curator, an art collector, an avid photographer, someone who is looking to revive the porcelain trade in Riga. Some of us are scattered around the world, but um, uh, it's, it, it does give a great opportunity to, uh, to reconnect and um, not feel so distant. Um, so that's one good thing. Uh, on the question of art influence, I was lucky that I grew up um, surrounded um, by my grandparents' collection of um, china and porcelain. Um, example, Exhibit A. Um, um, and in fact, I'm about to um, enter the porcelain business, um, reviving Riga's porcelain, um, a company that had been famous from the 1880s. Um, um, so that's, that's a brand new venture. And um, even so, I mean, say that's a commercial enterprise, but um, um, of course, um, designing um, d designing porcelain um, um, and uh, I'm using um, in my lines, I, my vision is to actually use um, uh, art and different artists' um, work as an inspiration um, to, to, to form the patterns. Um, I mean, the thing is that I've been, my father took me to, um, to the art galleries in, in London um, and to come to concerts in London from an extremely early age. Um, so while I'm not a musician, uh, um, painting and music, um, um, sort of all, all the arts have been very much um, connected in, in, in my mind, um, i.e. I can feel the rhythm in uh, painting and sculpture, um, um, so I, I, I don't feel a, a disconnect bet, um, between plastic art and uh, and music and poetry. I mean, the thing is that um, um, I feel that uh, they are all, all the disciplines are interconnected one one way and another. Um, and um, t tomorrow, in fact, through Zoom, I'm connecting with my colleagues from now scattered around the world, but we were part of the Kuwait Creative Writers Workshop. Um, so, um, I mean, again, I feel it's a connection of, it's connecting strands. Um, I mean, it's not one painting over here and music's over here. I mean, it's um, save of literature the the rhythm of the, the rhythm of words has its own kind of musical uh, notation if you, if you like so um miss shruti mehta i think you had uh, raised your hand as well thank you mr uh, mr harvey like that was really really insightful and same same as uh, Ms. Chaitali Roy like it's it's so good to like listen to and hear about like so many different perspectives about like what art means to you. From Austin joins yet another dear school friend Shruti Mehta. Shruti 
beautifully interconnects her interest in art, painting, to Sanskrit, to our ancient texts which she uses in her work as a wellness expert. Thank you so much. And first of all, I would like to say thank you to Malini, you know, the esteemed guest here. And my pranam to my late guru, Mrs. Avantika Jaitle. My, uh, my, um, my art journey started when I was very young at age 12, um, when I started going to my guru. And uh, the question about what art has meant to me in the long journey is that art has given me this concept of uh, fearlessness, and which we call abhay, abhayta. I can express it uh, in a way I want to. Uh, there are no bounds for me uh, when it comes to painting. And uh, as, a, as my journey continued, I realized that my art is not just limited to canvas and brushes. I started um, exploring other avenues uh, in my daily life where I can incorporate my art. And I also started exploring uh, writing. Uh, I've been learning Sanskrit for many years. Um, and so I wanted to incorporate art uh, in a way that I can represent my culture in the West, uh, here in right now where I am in Texas. So I started incorporating Sanskrit in my paintings uh, and I was very fortunate. One of my paintings uh, with the Sanskrit shloka is in our city hall. Uh, and the painting is about Tulsi Puja. Uh, so that, you know, for me, it has become a medium to represent my, uh, who I am. Um, so one of the paintings that, uh, and so art, I found that there's no, it, it is a journey. Um, the learning never ends. I, when I grew up, I was learning oil painting. And when I came here, uh, I was exposed to so many different medias and I came to know different artists. So I started learning and absorbing, um, new forms of art and applying that to my style. So now I do uh, more like acrylic uh, mixed media. Um, and it's, it always gives me so much joy. You know, the, what we call the, the emotion of Anand. So I would like to share one of my uh, paintings that I recently completed. It is a mixed media. And I like to do my own compositions. That's where the freedom comes from, right? So this is one of my paintings. Um, and my paintings tell a story. Um, so this one, I call it hide and seek. I don't know if you can see the birds, the water birds. And then you see there's a peacock hiding over here. I don't know if it's the zoom is really giving it injustice, but um, so, I like to tell my a story through my paintings. So for me, it's a, it's a process, it's an evolution um, of my skills and my journey is an evolution. Uh, I will keep doing this. I don't know how, you know, as long as I can. So oh, that's all I want to say about my journey as an artist. And I'm very happy to be here. Thank you all. Yeah, I certainly could see the peacock in the painting like that it was really um, it's quite interesting, actually, that um, uh, like painting and um, fine art is also a form uh, that gives it, uh, like that's so different, but yet so connected to music as well. And how you tie in music and poetry into your painting and your artwork that uh, I think that's very unique uh, in, a, in a sense. Uh, so thank you, ma'am. That was really insightful. Um, um, Sri B. Vaidinadan, sir, or um, uh, Srimati uh, Sugandha, ma'am, uh, 
uh, or any of the other guests, you you may feel free to like chime in. Yeah, I, I believe Sri Vaidyanathan sir has. Vidwan Shriman B. Vaidyanathan joins us from Hyderabad. A quintessential musician, musicologist, Sri B. V. Sir hails from an illustrious musical legacy. Someone who strongly believes art should be shared unconditionally. Yeah. My journey started with a very simple way of music learning, which was very late. Although I belong to a music family, from both from paternal and maternal side, I was, although music was getting into my mind, I was filling up my mind, but I was not towards music. Great stall was Mestros, used to visit our home. But my, my job was, you know, I was, even when I was working, I was traveling almost 20 days in a month. Those days, we used to travel all alone in the jeep, not these days car, very really easy to drive. Those days, we had to have the canvas jeep. I used to travel 20 days in a month, traveling. I was working as a field officer in an American-based international voluntary agency. So I used to travel 20 days like that for 15 years, eating sand fries, stones, curry, and other things. You know, outside you don't know what you get. When I eat good food at home, I feel drowsy. So this is what was happening with me. And music was on and off. It was playing hide and seek with me. Then suddenly, I started playing Veena, an instrument, Veena. My father said, okay, fact, the problem was, by the time it becomes hard here, I get a field trap. Then I get a pain. Then I asked my father, I want to sing. Then he said, do you want quality or quantity? Then he said, I want a qualitative. Then he gave me some tips. Sing these things. Then I started singing practice. Then it became real, 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 real understanding of music and I went very deeper into music. So much so I was treating myself with music. Then I stopped doing any other thing like no going to movie, no playing cards. I used to play cards also. So all those things stopped. Only music. Then I started drinking, eating, sleeping music. Okay, this is what has happened. Then I used to, and my voice was very bad because of my travel. Open jeep, you, in the forest area, you know, when you travel <coughs> like that. My voice was very bad, very bad. I don't know how it is like now. Do you like to hear my voice now? Is it okay? Okay. So my voice was very bad, but I started working. I was questioning myself, how will I improve my voice? This is my quest every night. How will I improve my musical knowledge? How will I improve my singing capacity? These kind of quests help me to develop some kind of voice culture method, voice culture methodology. All those things help me to improve. Okay, so having put myself into the journey of learning, then I graduated into performing. Normally, many people say that, you know, is a performing artist. For me, I don't like to use the word performing artist, practicing artist. Like chartered accountant, like advocate, they say, we say practicing chartered accountant, practicing artist, like the practicing musician. Then further I got graduated into a teacher. Teaching is very difficult. Even performance is better. Teaching, you know, different level of people and showing patience and giving them everything that I can give. 
this has become my lifetime commitment and i treat myself with music and we have a music school called sangeeta vaidyanti all our sangeeta vaidyanti is there all our dynamics in that school everyone is equal and we teach not only music various aspects how do you behave how you interact with people how you conduct yourself and how you take this music into a different level like just now i saw the painting of um, shruti so when we sing as rightly mentioned by vikas it captures everything it can be a painting it can be a nritya the musician actually although he may not be putting the full makeup he is dancing with an insight then only the right art comes this is what i have learned and music is the lifetime companion with me which is part of my blood and soul it will be there till my last this is the decision and another commitment what i made is i must teach to the best of my ability without any reservation irrespective of who comes to me so this is how i made my commitment and moving The music has treated me when I had a major bypass, major heart attack. I was giving a concert about 18 years ago, concert going up, serious attack. But I was singing the main item. <laughs> Then you know, I have taken music as a medicine to treat me. This is what is being treated used by most of my Sangeet audience in their family. in really great harmony between the family understanding each one this is how the music is helping me and the sangeeta vaidyanth is and many of my associates and i share many of these kind of experience with malini ji also this is about myself i am still a learner I conclude it here. Okay. Truly, I think yeah, music definitely has such a healing power, and um, I think it, it is. It, I think for every one of us, I speak like uh, on behalf of rag and rhythm. Also, I find that like music truly, for me personally, also um, like. Uh, I had a disconnect with music for so long, and I was able to get back with um, uh, Shrimati Malini Vishwanath and, like you know, begin my music journey again. And it truly has been a wonderful experience. And um, to to get back to music, with all the stresses that happen in life, uh, I think like music has been. for me personally an opportunity to escape from all of those stressors and kind of be in my own space and uh uh express my uh my interest and my hobbies right so uh definitely i think it 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 truly has a really good healing power um uh i believe mr Har- uh, harvey has um raised his hand but um i would like to like give uh, the other guests uh, mr marius or miss uh, uh, uh mrs suganda karamega ma'am uh, if you want to chime in or miss manvita baradi um uh, nalini ma'am uh, anybody like you know if you would like to like just chime in and uh, um give your perspective about art um if not like uh, mr harvey you can go right ahead think well, i i just wanted to briefly say that um <clears throat> uh, i can identify um uh, very much you know previous speaker that um uh we are practicing um all all the time all 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 the, t- all the time um uh and that is how we can achieve what 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 we do achieve the other thing is that um and the other point i can identify with is that um at various um 
various strands of art, whatever it may be, are inside us, but it doesn't always express um, immediately or the beginning of one's career. Sometimes it lies dormant, but it it's there, it's inside, um, and there's a time that um, it is right, it feels right to express it, and um, um, so um, at various times I've suddenly gone into photography, I've done different disciplines, worked at different disciplines, but the thing is that it's something obviously that's always been inside, but um, doesn't always express at an early age or at a particular time, but it, eventually it comes out. No, thank you. That was just I wanted to respond to that remark. Absolutely, for sure. Um, I think Suganda, ma'am, uh, you had um, raised your hand. Vidushi Srimati Suganda Karamegam joins us from Chennai. Deeply ideological, a thinking musician, someone who has performed widely and has been mentored by some of the greatest stalwarts of Carnatic music. For me, art, music, culture, they are interlinked. As a South Indian, uh, getting introduced to music was but natural. Every household introduced the girl child to the music of our uh, Carnatic system. So that is how I was uh, into music. Earlier, of course, when I was a child, it, was, it didn't mean much to me because I had other activities like going to school, college, and all those things. And after we finished uh, school, college, and all, music became a serious part of my life. And uh, as it would have, I had the opportunities also to perform everywhere. And that gave me a lot more encouragement to enter into this. But uh, up to maybe 40, 20, 30 years of performing, that was one way of uh, approaching art. But after that, a more serious a uh, way to look into art was to learn the art in the deeper sense. In the sense, <clears throat> as you all know that we have so many, the 72 Melakarta Ragas and the great composers, Trinities. When we have so much to learn, I am still a learner. There are so many things unknown to me, a very few things known to me. So, this art is something very engaging in one's life. It really gives you a lot of peace and uh, you are able to, you know, uh, think into yourself in terms of art. When I start uh, understanding a new raga, it really occupies my mind for sometimes days also. So that way, you know, you, do, you are not bothered about the other uh, mundane things that happen in this around you. You are within yourself. That, that sort of, an, uh, that is also yogic in some way, I must say. You are away from other things. You are into music. You are into a dhyana mood. That really makes your life more peaceful and gives a lot of meaning to one's life. That's how I see art as. So the, the, this extends to, in uh, being in Chennai, I must say that visiting a temple is a most uh, rewarding experience for anybody, where you have the art in the form of sculptures, art in the form of music, art in the form of other paintings, like mural paintings we see in our temples. So it's a wonderful place to enjoy art in different forms. This is how, how I would say art means to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, uh, I think uh, uh, for sure, like, you know, it, it does transform us to an, um, like personally, again, also uh, to chime in, it transforms us into an, uh, an area or a zone by itself. Um, and I find that too. 
that um, with music, with specifically for me and art in general, I think it transports us to an area where um, we feel that calmness, we feel that um, uh, sense of peace. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I think Ms. Man, uh, uh, Mrs. Manvita Bharati, I, you, you can please go ahead, ma'am. From Ahmedabad joins Manvita Bharati, a dear school friend. Manvita has found this beautiful artistic interconnectedness between all that she has been associated with in her long journey. Theatre, intact, urban governance, architecture, the academic aspect of architecture, temple architecture, her thesis on Nati Shastra. Thank you. Thank you for having me and a wonderful hearing all of you. Um, my journey began when I was very, very small. I'm, I am born into a family of artists. So my both my parents were um, actors and uh, directors and media professionals. So from the age of uh, very, very young age. Um, and I grew up in Russia because both of them went to Russia to uh, start uh, broadcasting for India from Russia. So and uh, uh, they're radio professionals. So my mom would speak uh, live on radio and would be very, and uh, Chaitali would appreciate that, like on the dot to begin and to end. You know, she was a best professional, very good voice. And the live broadcasting was uh, possible only then. This was what, um, late 50s and early 60s uh, when she was uh, very, very, very active. Um, after that, um, uh, they were with Moscow Radio and then we came back. So my grooming or uh, I got exposed to media very early on, like at the age of three, I had my own projector and I would have a film strip uh, and I would rotate uh, that and tell, narrate a story. So there was visual and there was storytelling. So I, from age of three in Russian, I would talk in whatever, <laughs> and I was encouraged to uh, do that. So uh, after coming back, uh, my adjustment period was very difficult. And I'm sure my friends, Na Mal Na uh, Malini, Nalini, and Shruti would remember uh, my broken uh, English and hardly Gujarati. Uh, it was very difficult me, if, for me to learn the language and be in the mainstream. So, But theatre helped me because of my parents. And uh, I was a child artist selector for the television where they would narrate me a scene and I would have to emote and talk. And my that series become very, very popular. I was in third grade at that point of time. So having, uh, and I didn't know then, but it seems I was, I was a celebrity. And so when I would walk, uh, my hair and my frock would be pulled by others and I would cry. I mean, that was my expression. And my parents never... Uh, <laughs> Um, kind of uh, explain what was happening. So I was, I then did not want to do it further. So from age, I think when I was in sixth grade, I stopped uh, television and I didn't like to be so, so much in public eye. Um, after that, I started back when I, I graduated and also did dance meanwhile. So I learned Bharat Natyam and the exposure to Indian culture in that sense, what mudras meant, what music means and how do you emote to a raga, tala, etc., you know, um, was kind of given to me. And uh, that uh, led me to... Uh, understand Indian culture and I decided to study architecture. So again, you would see the blend of media, theater, dance, music, everything coming to a physical entity. And I studied temple architecture and studied theater architecture. So that was my specialization later. Um, uh, so uh, with all of that, and my father set up a media and theater institute, which now, I, now I'm handling along with my um, understanding of architecture, um, urban planning, because how cities are formed, how governance influences culture. So that's my, uh, that's where I am. I am uh, managing an institute called Theater and Media Center, uh, 
uh, started by my father. We bring out a quarterly magazine in Gujarati language on theater, the only surviving magazine. And we are in the 94th uh, issue I just completed before coming to this meeting. Uh, and uh, we just launched it. Uh, um, I also uh, have, we have a wonderful theater archives, the only institute which have archives of theater, which we, means that uh, costumes, headgear, it's not museum, it's archives. So my friends here, uh, we're talking about how, you know, music man uh, museum management, Chaitali spoke and uh, Harvey's also spoke about how uh, important it is to, you know, talk talk about preservation, conservation, etc. So we are conserving theater, which is extremely difficult because it's a live performance and it's once happened, it's gone. So in our, uh, in our way, it's a, uh, we're, uh, we're writing about it, we are talking about it, and uh, we have ample photographs and videos. So that's my journey. I'm, I'm uh, a blend of uh, many things, but I love the the interconnections between all the art forms. Thank you. Yes, truly amazing how like we are able to interconnect so many. And um, I mean, I know Ms. Chaitali Roy is um, also in media, telecommunication, and uh, uh, Ms., uh, Mrs. Man uh, Baradi is also doing that. And I mean, there's so much of interconnect. That's amazing. Um, I think uh, 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 Mrs. Chaitali Roy um, has raised her hand. Uh, her hand. Um, Ms. Chaitali Banerjee Roy joins us from Kuwait. Our association goes back two decades. She dons many hats. She's a writer, an author, a cultural journalist, producer, editor of Kuwait Radio. And when Chetali writes, one has to read it. All her sensibilities flow through her writings. She has tread on the path on tread. Um, please go ahead, ma'am. Well, Manvita, it was fascinating to listen to you. And you kind of <laughs> opened up something in my mind, you know. It was a very tough day for me personally. And I had called uh, uh, Malini up in the morning and shared, you know, how difficult it was going to be for me to be at the meeting. But I'm so glad I did. And um, uh, I mean... It's fascinating to know about your background and, of course, the others. I I now realize, <laughs> uh, in fact, I think I had mentioned to Malini before, that uh, I always moved away from art you know, in the, the sense that as a child, uh, as um, Mrs. Carla Megham said, uh, even in South India, that's the case. I mean, I, I was introduced to music at a very young age as a Bengali. You know, in, you have to know Robindra Shongit and you have to. So uh, I was introduced, my mother, uh, she sent me to Bharat Natyam classes. I learned Robindra Sangeet when I, and Hindustani classical at a very young age. And I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. And then uh, I veered towards jazz and uh, Western, Western music. And I sang, uh, I, I, used, I sang through school, I sang through college, and I sang through university. But in those days, one couldn't, or, read, I, or perhaps I wasn't persistent enough, one couldn't make a career or, or you didn't have parental approval doing jazz, you know, basically. And, uh, and uh, I, I, uh, I was also into theatre. So Manvita, that's so very exciting. Of course, Malini told me about your time. <laughs> this is something I really want to talk about off, off, the, off the Zoom. <laughs> so I was into theater and that's where I saw myself in. And then again, no, you can't do theater. So, and then I went into radio broadcasting, but I realized that through my journey of being away from, you know, I don't want to do, I don't want to do Bharat Natyam. I don't want to do Hindustan classical. Yes, I like jazz. I realized one thing and that is when I, I took like a fish to water when I came into radio broadcasting, all, all because of this this thing that this journey that I'd gone through as a child. And I also realized something as I went through with radio broadcasting and came to Kuwait is that my exposure to art in its different and varied forms and the different stages of my life had actually helped me to see life in a different perspective altogether. I was not 
art art helped me to be broad minded art helped me to not to be parochial not to think you know not to not to see things through tinted glasses i mean i was i was clear i i believe it made me liberal broad minded accepting and i was able to accept so many things and um, and be tolerant this is what art has given me tolerance acceptance um, and i think that's and that also reflects in the work that i do uh, as a cultural journalist or as a broadcaster yes thank you manvit <laughs> yeah super we'll catch up yeah, <laughs> chaitali <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. So, Mr. Marius, I think you can go ahead and um, yeah, uh, maybe provide your perspective. And from Kuwait joins Mr. Marius Rosano, a Romanian clarinetist pianist, with whom we have had many opportunities to collaborate on many occasions. Mr. Marius loves. to adapt to other forms of music and i would like to call him a music academic someone who's interested in teaching music and carrying it forward okay cool uh, well uh, yeah speaking about uh, the benefits of attending to uh, meetings uh, such as this one very many interesting insights and I think it is inspiring for all of us. Uh I have now disclaimer uh, I have to tell you my internet connection is not that great and I don't know if you can hear me very well. Uh I could I could hear 98 let's say like this roughly uh, uh about what has been discussed with uh three zaps and uh, little uh uh interruptions uh, therefore uh, i i had to uh go with this disclaimer i'm not sure let's hope fingers crossed be positive here that you will be able to to hear me well and um see what i uh, thought i would prepare because you know we had this uh, uh, conversation the other day with malini uh, via whatsapp and uh uh i knew that uh, this would would be discussed what is what is art and very very interesting and difficult question uh to answer to and then i did some research <laughs> go figure you know because there are so many things that um uh, resonates with all of us us and it, it's sometimes difficult to just articulate you know uh unless you you read it somewhere or you 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 pick it up and you put it together and uh i don't know uh what would you like me to do i mean because i thought rather than just speaking about myself because there was there were so many interesting presentations and um uh, really very uh catchy stories of life uh i thought um, i i would start maybe with some music if you would agree to have some music because rather than just speaking about myself i could play something although not live because you know this uh uh platforms are uh, very limited in terms of instrumental uh, streaming live streaming but i thought uh, i could present uh, something that i just uploaded on my youtube channel which i never use but this is fresh uh, done for this meeting specifically and you guys maybe you can uh, be entertained yeah sure mr marius uh, shared it with uh, shripati we shall just yeah. play it now yeah sure uh, would you you know i've heard the uh, heard the uh, i've heard the lady before me she said oh great that's that's what i meant to say uh, latin jazz uh, you might enjoy this okay 
Go for yeah, it. Can you just uh, tell us a bit about this piece, Mr. Marius? That would be really nice. Well, you know, I really recommend you to listen to Paquito de Rivera, uh, the, the composer of this piece. He is a contemporary musician and composer. Okay. Um, uh, he's a Latin, of course, Latin American uh, composer. And uh, he, not only that he's so talented and such an inspiration, and his music is always uh, like, like uh, you know, beautiful melodies, uh, but he's also a very funny guy. And in his concerts, he's like, you, you can have a good laugh uh, when he's presenting uh, some of okay. his pieces. So, yeah, I strongly recommend you to check, check him on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, any live music, any live concerts by Paquito de Rivera. This is Vaz Venezolano, one of his uh, compositions, and I happen to like like it. And I just uh, I thought, okay, I will record this. Um, uh, sure. Yeah, we can play. Uh, hopefully, this is heard. Please let me know if there's any audio. Yeah, sure, Yeah, I, I hope you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is what I hope, you say. I hope no. you enjoyed it. Yeah, uh, longing for more of it. I think this is what is important. <laughs> we want more of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it ties in of... very well. Yeah, please go. Go, go, go ahead, ahead. Please. Go ahead, go ahead. Y yeah, um, you know. Uh, a little music is always uh, welcomed, and uh, it's so so uh, good choice. Thank you, Malini, for uh, choosing it because it ties in very well with our previous um, uh, presenter. Well, Mr. Bhairavi, um, Shripati has chosen. You this. know, Shripati has chosen this. <laughs> Shripati yeah. has chosen. Yeah, yeah. 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 thank Shripati. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you, Sh thank you, Shripati. Good job. Well done there in moderating the whole thing. Uh, uh, you know, uh, if you if you uh, have uh, the patience, you guys, to uh, bear with me here. Let me see. Because, you know, as I said, I did some research and uh, I thought, okay, a holistic approach maybe would work because there, there were so many things that I myself discovered while, uh, while reading, uh, you know, throughout the internet, all these uh, informations that I'm sure will resonate with, with all of you. Um, 
and I'm gonna share my screen because I don't know how my uh, how my computer how my uh, internet connection is how how stable it is. So it, just in case you lose my voice. Uh, Uh, this is now bear in mind this is about I don't know maybe seven eight minutes but you might uh, learn things as I did learn while uh, while writing it and doing it so what is art the dictionary definition of art says that it is the conscious use of skill and creative imagination especially in the production of aesthetic objects uh, Miriam Webster. But the thing about art is that it's so diverse that there are as many ways to understand it as there are people. That's why uh, there are scholars who give their own special definition of the word, such as the one uh, penned by this famous Russian novelist, uh, Leo Tolstoy, which goes, art is the activity by which a person having experienced an emotion intentionally transmits it to others. Uh, as a side note, during his life, Tolstoy was known to write novels, uh, and uh, uh, the lady uh, that spoke before, that grew up in Russia, uh, I'm sure she's uh, familiar with, uh, with his works. Such uh, inspiring uh, novelist. His famous, his one of his most famous work is War and Peace, uh, that used much of this experience during the Crimean uh, uh, War. He was a soldier in the Crimean War. Uh, and whether or not his definition of art is the best, the point is that people look at art based on how they have experienced it. It's a personal thing can be. What is art? There are many common definitions of art, a few to quote. Art is any creative work of a human being, a form of expressing oneself, an act of making something visually entertaining, an activity that manifests the beauty, a mastery, an ideal way of doing things, or discovery and development of elementary principles of nature into beautiful forms suitable for human understanding and use. Uh, why is art important? Art is uniquely positioned to move people, inspiring us, inciting new questions, and provoking curiosity, excitement, and outrage. Uh, it's hard to be subjective or uh, rather objective in saying this is good art, this is bad art, because even provoking outrage is a form of art as long as it, it steals up emotions. Artists can strengthen the will and push people to act. They do not think like policymakers or academic people. Artists think from their heart, big, revolutionary and visionary ideas. This is why artists are able to move people into action, thus creating a significant cultural and political contribution. This is what makes art powerful. The impact of art on politics, culture and people Art is very important in society because it is an essential ingredient to empowering the hearts of people. When activists are showing images of children suffering from poverty or oppression in their campaigns, this is the art pulling the heartstrings of society's elite, inspiring them to make changes. Similarly, when photographers uh, publish the photos of war-torn areas, it catches the attention of masses whose hearts reach out for those who need help. When an artist creates great music and movies, it entertains people around the world. This is art at work, making a difference in society. In conclusion, it yeah. is imminent to reflect upon why art is important, which in fact provides you with the answer to what is art. Art and its definition will always be controversial. There will always be debates about what art is and what is not. But no matter what the definition may be, arts have been around us for as long as humans have existed. Uh, whether or not we are aware of them surrounding us, we allow arts to affect our lives one way or another. 
And the reasons why we produce art are many. We use the arts for our entertainment, cultural appreciation, aesthetics, personal improvement, and even social change. We, we, we use the arts in order to thrive in this world. Yeah, I think that was a good read. I think it's a good read. Line. Yeah, certainly yeah. it's a very good, good read. Please share it with me and I'll share it with uh, all my students. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I think that was very, very uh, thoughtful of you to have, you know, come about with so many beautiful aspects of art. Um, I hope I hope it resonates with uh, with uh, your in, uh, in, invitees here and I'm yeah. going to now try and stop absolutely. sharing. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, I think. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Marius, and thank you for that beautiful piece, the Latin jazz piece that you it's been a, specially it's been uploaded a on okay. the uh, YouTube. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. And I would now like to invite my friend Nalini Gupta from Singapore joins Ms. Nalini Gupta, another dear school friend of mine. Nalini loves to write in Hindi and English and she connects and writes about whatever she feels emotionally strong about, be it an ode to the martyrs or be it an ode to Ganga or be it heralding 2021 on a positive note. Nalini has written about them all. She has written something specially for today. So let's hear what Nalini has to say. Thank you. Uh, that was wonderful clarinet. I really loved it. And uh, thank you all the speakers for sharing your such humble experiences. And uh, this is also surreal, you know, meeting my classmates after such a long time and having an evening like this, it's so beautiful. And I have written something which I'll now share with you. So what is art and life? So I have, uh, I gave it a thought when Malini told me, and this is what I have written. Bringing out the best in someone is the vision, the art of seeing. Getting the blessings of the old and helpless is the art of listening. Not to hurry and worry in life is the art of smelling the roses. How you make others feel is the art of having a good taste. Forgiveness and compassion is the best art of touching. So these are the five senses that I thought and each day we touch upon them. Admiring flowers, fruits, and the full moon is the art of happiness. Honoring the marriage and the spouse lifelong is the art of romance. Commending a weaver bird's nest on a tree is the art of amazement. Applauding the ethereal Shimmering auroras, the northern lights, is the art of gratitude. Leaving a better world than what we inherited is the art of living. So, depending on an art in life is like an anchor to a ship. Some are born with an art, some are born with an art and some acquire it. The literature, the visual, the graphic, the decorative arts, the performing arts, the music, and the architecture binds the divinity and humanity like nothing else. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you for listening to me. Wonderful, Nalini, wonderful. And here we have a surprise for you. Nalini had written something, I think six to seven months ago. And our dear boy, Shripati Shridhar, gave music to Nalini's words. So here we have the writer and we have the musician. Let's hear it from Shripati. 
Shivati, can you just sing that bit for us? These are words in English which Shripati has so beautifully woven into Rag Hamsatvani, written by Nalini Gupta. Oh, I wish this world was not divided. Oh, I wish we lived without fear. Oh, I wish humans peacefully coexisted. Oh, I wish there was cheer in every sphere. A dream of world peace without sacrifice. I dream of borders without despise. I dream of mothers raising kids in paradise. I dream of blessed days I could fantasize. Respect human life, a supreme creation, and build tolerant generations. We rise above communal frustrations, and life becomes a celebration. So Nalini, how did you feel? Your uh, words being yeah, treated so beautifully. So it was a hope very, swani very, set in Hamza Dwani. So we named it Hope Swani. I am in tears, Shripati. Even that time and live singing, this is too good. And you like made it an anthem sort of so beautiful. <laughs> the words Thanks. meant something and the melody and everything took it to the next level. And thank you for Malini for guiding up for Shripati and the way you put it. And my school played this, you know, and the students just loved it. Like uh, this teacher from, um, uh, who was Malini, Italian or Spanish, this lady, I forgot. Yeah, Spanish, yeah, yeah. And uh, she made the best in notations and she played it in the school in the, during the assembly. And my God, like, <laughs> that was, thank you so much. And I hope... Yeah, we work further as well, Shripati. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a special question from Shiani to Nalini and Chaitali Roy. And Shiani is a girl who is very, very dear to every one of us here. Shiani, you have something to ask of Nalini, ma'am? Please ask your question. Nalini Dapta, ma'am, what inspires you to write? Oh dear, <laughs> what inspires me to write? Uh, okay, how do I answer? Oh, Marini, you should have told me this. <laughs> okay, so better, nah, it's just that everyday things that really are happening around, I write about them, you know. Whatever is in 2020 has been a year which nobody will ever forget it. So how I wish also was the 2020 situation and that's how I wrote this. And uh, art and life because Malini told me. So Beta, it is the sort of everyday experiences that culminate and uh, it just gives rise to something like, you know, I don't specially think there's no fictional writing, you know, whatever is happening around what I'm experiencing. And that is what I try to pen it down. So I try to write in Hindi as well as in English. That's all better. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Shiani, you wanted to ask Chetali Roy a question? Chetali Benerjee, ma'am, what kind of art have you written about in your long journey? Mm, that's a good question. And I want to add something to Shiani's question. Should I, Shiani? Like, have you also covered 
this particular aspect of society, writing about, you know, special needs, uh, children who have been specially abled. Have you ever thought about writing about them or have you ever written about them, Chitan? You know, 20 years is a, actually a, a long time. Sometimes I feel I'm really getting old because I can't remember a lot of things that I've been doing. And there's been quite well, quite a lot of stuff going on. But uh, to take the first question, Shani, thank you very much for that question. Um, uh, <laughs> I've written extensively about Islamic art and Harvey knows that. Um, a lot of it has to do with um, my work with Dar Lathar al Islamia. And because of the part of the world that I stay and work in, so uh, I've written about artists in this country and especially women artists. I find their work uh, most interesting. There are some of them who are so, who are able to take, uh, you know, society by its collar and shake them out of us, you know, the sense of uh, uh, despondency and, and uh, mm, no, she, she doesn't use the word. She says, uh, shake it out of its uh, um, uh, uh, traditionalism, let's put it that way. So I write about women artists in Kuwait. I write about Islamic art. I've written about art therapy, but not in great depth. I've written about uh, how art, uh, how art influences, uh, uh, how how art influences life, especially with special needs children. I've done some work with the Down syndrome children, but uh, as I said, I really can't recall it. Uh, I've also written about the art of uh, sadhu, which is Bedouin weaving, and uh, how it has helped special needs children. The art of learning how to do things with your hands has had a huge effect on these uh, children uh, who do this, uh, who follow this, uh, you know, who's, who've done extensive workshops and there's a, uh, and you can see the difference in them uh, after, well, a, a couple of months or, you know, or, or a few series of workshops. So, yes, but I would definitely like to do more work uh, in this in this area, I've had I've spoken to Malini about this, and I think it's great the the work that uh, she is doing, you know, in this particular area. And this is something I would like to do more work in. There is more that needs to be done, personally for me. Thank you, Chetali. Now we have a surprise for you. Let us have a jugal bandi between BV sir and Suganda ma'am. Yeah. Any rag at Thoda Jugal Bandi? Jugal Bandi between any rag, be it Yaman or Kalyani or Hindulam, shall we have an impromptu Jugal Bandi? BV sir and Suganda Kana Megam, ma'am? Jugal Bandi, not two different, uh, uh, the same, Hindustani or. Yeah, normally it's Hindustani, but actually the true word of Jugal Bandi, if you look at it, it, it is between yeah. two similar formats, but it has been interpreted as. Two formats from two different streams, which it yeah. may not be actually. Yes. So it would be it would be a huge learning and absolutely beautiful for us to listen to two stalwarts presenting a rag in their uh, own what, inimitable style. What is your Sruti, madam? Soganda, madam. Five and a half. I'm sorry. Five. Are you asking me some? So should I sing in five and a half with you? Shall we sing? Yes. Shall we sing Sankara Varnam? Oh yes, sure. Okay. Please start. Please start. Can I have the Shruti? Yeah, I have put. This is not my Shruti actually. My pitch is different, but I will sing with Madam. Mm -hmm. Na 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 na
we'll do another we, when we we'll learn do music that. we learn certain rules when we sing we use our heart theory is insufficient for fine art we cannot express the taste of a mango and it is creative so we did not plan this thing my shruti is let me just uh, show you shruti my best shruti is piano c thank you thank you so much that was so sporty of the both of you very so beautiful so beautiful and manita since you love uh, hindustani classical as does shruti this is rag uh, bilawal for them <clears throat> so again bilawal. Uh, bilawal thart is the main thart as is shankara varna which is one of the main ragas for us now we open um, the session to questions from our students yeah ragavi will moderate sure uh, thank you all for participating and uh, just now for this performance i really really enjoyed that uh, i'm not going to be as expert in uh, expert moderator as vignesh was but uh, i will try and i know that uh, havi has kept his hand raised for a while now so i'm going to go with the hands raised and then maybe i'll open the floor to other panelists as well as students who want to ask questions and we can go in turns so maybe how we want to ask your question first thank you um no, i just wanted to respond to one um comment that um uh marius uh, made about questioning whether there's good and bad art um the thing is that uh my feeling is that um uh, well there's two two works of painting that um i think my answer the point is that uh, there's picasso's gernika um it's a painting about war it's about the bombing of the um town of gernika in the spanish civil war and um it is conventionally hailed as great art i actually don't agree with it um and comparing with um goya's painting of the 25th of may which was painted after the napoleonic wars um you can say it, both are about the brutality of war the difference being that the picasso's genica to me is very one dimensional um war is bad well we can all agree war and destruction is 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 bad and uh, um <clears throat> one might as well write down the words war is bad we know that um the difference with the um with the uh goya painting um from the spanish civil war is that although it's depicting the horrors of war the um in the middle of the painting um one of the people being lined up to be shot actually is painted with hands raised christ like and this actually it's appropriate being easter i suppose um um but the thing is that it not only says war is bad but it but the but his painting does something more because it also shows hope and um so it just like the um um that says somehow hope in the in the middle of the pain um there's actually some something more so the point is that the goya painting to me but works on it's not just works on a propaganda level um i've been mean, advertising art we can um see adverts for coca cola you know um the thing is that the the goya painting actually goes much deeper 
um, I- into expressing feelings. That was my comment. But thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Excellent point. And I think also important for us to appreciate that sometimes art really does project uh, some understandings and perceptions on us and we have to be uh, we have to be cognizant of that. Uh, uh, before I get Matthias to respond, if he'd like to, maybe this is also a yeah, yeah. appropriate <laughs> moment to share uh, Jayant's painting. Jayant happens to be one of my mother's students who also is a, a, a wizard with the brush, I realize now. Mm-hmm. And maybe let me share his painting and he can uh, he can then uh, explain to us what he, what he was thinking about when he painted that. So give me a minute. Yes, Jen loves to paint. Uh, just a second. Good. Just a second. Yeah. Is this visible? And Jen, Not yet. To, yeah, yes. yes. You want to run us yes. through with some commentary? Yes. yes. Hello, everyone. Okay. Um, if you don't know me already, my name is Jayan, and um, I do art as a hobby, and I have started um, when I was around um, 10 or 11 years old, and I started paying interest to art. Um, so this picture, what you see here, is a focus, is a landscape focus on the lower Manhattan side uh, in New York City. And, and and it's mainly, media used is mainly um, ink. There was no paint involved. It's mainly ink, markers and things. And um, the emotions I try to express towards the viewer is mainly bewilderment. Um, and I would like the viewer to visualize how the urban landscape will be beyond the picture, since this is just part of the picture that's being focused on. So, yeah, that's my comment. Thank you. Uh, For my own self, this really looks wondrous. And uh, I did feel rather bewildered when I saw it. Uh, So mission accomplished, I'd say. Uh, Maris, would you like to respond to uh, Javi's point? Uh, Sorry, I would really want to compliment. That was brilliant. That was, uh, sorry, Jay or Rishi, who did that? Sorry. Oh, I did. Thank you. He's Jay. He's giant. He's giant. Wow. And how old are you? I am 14 years old. Wow. That's really <laughs> excellent. Excellent. And later, I think Malini, you can share Shruti's in the big screen. I think uh, we couldn't see uh, Shruti's uh, hide and seek, right? The painting. Oh yeah. Sure. I'll do that. I'll do that. I just wanted to add something that was just amazing. I love your narration sure. behind that, your story behind that. Um, Chaitali has already left, but I just wanted to quickly say something about art therapy. I'm a mental health professional, like a psychologist here in Texas, and I use art a lot with my clients. What they cannot express with their words, art is a beautiful medium for them to express. Thank you. Thank you, Shruti Aunty. Uh, Ramya, I see that you also have a question. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, so it was for, uh, uh, it was for uh, uh, Shri Shruti. Uh, wanted to know how we can, uh, you know, encourage uh, children to take art as a profession and how you would, what, what is the scope for art as a profession for kids and uh, as parents, how can we encourage them and uh, bring that up? So art, uh, to me, like I, it's, it's like uh, painting, you know, art is, gives freedom. Um, I would just bring supplies and tell them, let them do whatever they want to do. They're like, don't set any boundaries, like color within the lines. I would not do that. Let them express how they want to s- express it. So like say, for example, you take them to the park. And you come back and say, hey, you want to draw you know, the picture of the park? What is your perspective, your imagination of a park? Or how do you see a park? Like birds or nature. You know, I would start with that and let them 
uh, express it the way they want to, narrate, give the narration, tell the story about it. I would put it up on the walls to show them that I appreciate what you have done. I think that's a great way to begin. Um, as a profession, not, it, it kind of evolves. I was, I mean, I started learning art, then I start, I kind of developed my own niche. Like, this is what I like to do. Uh, started making my own compositions. So I encourage, and I started teaching now. So as a teacher, I encourage my students to create their own compositions. Like, of course, they, they're going to learn techniques uh, and then they find their own niche. Um, and then they, I, I encourage them to exhibit at various places. Uh, we have a lot of, in Austin, we have a lot of different ways to exhibit. I'm part of a creative art society. Um, so there we, I take part in curated artworks, juried artworks. Um, and they can go from there. Uh, they can go on to be an art lecturer. So there are so many avenues with art. And one of the things I, I started, the way I started was like donating my art to charity auctions you know, for scholarships. Um, that's where I, 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 was, I found the recognition. So I hope I answered your question. Uh, uh, definitely. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Krita or uh, Jyotsna, I see. I see lots of hands raised, uh, but Preeta, if you have a question and you'd like to jump in. Thank you, Rathavi. Um, it's, it's been such an insightful uh, discussion so far, and it's, it's just a blessing to listen into every perspective that you all shared. Thank you for all of that. This is not a specific question to any of you, but anyone, if you could please share your thoughts, that would be helpful. Based on your experience and journey um, so far, um, how, would you would you think art has influenced your perspective about life or your experiences with life has widened your you know uh, your approach to art so has it been which which way has it been is is it like a like your personal experiences have actually enriched your expression in your own art form or is it a case that your journey with that internal journey with art has actually you know influenced your perspective of life i could be both as well so i don't know it's a very it's, it could be very much a personal uh, experience um, based response to this question well for me i would say both uh Harvey, maybe you can start and then i saw baby sir's physical hand raised so he can jump in as soon as you're done. No, I just say, for me, it's, it's interconnected. It, it, it's, it's both. Um, uh, my life influences what I do, and also my journey through art has, has impact on my being. So it's connected. Maybe so. Yes, we find out what we've done. It can be any form of art. This gives a lot of enrichment. Normally, the, the real deeper find out could be painting, could be music, which is totally a meaningful. It is beyond a hobby. In fact, it gives a lot of inner strength. It gives a lot of inner commitment. Okay, I have learned this. How best I can treat people, I can give this to others. Because my gurus taught me. They gave a wonderful art along with the best way of behavior and giving us. So I can't go and give back to them. Okay, now you taught me, so let me teach you, you can tell them. So this is my lifetime commitment that whatever I know without any reservation, I should give it to them. That gives me immense happiness. Second thing is, the day my disciples seem much, much, much better than me with great understanding, that is the day I feel the most valuable day 
for my birth on the earth. This kind of commitment I get when I get into the deep water. Thank you, sir. Uh, Manvita ji, Nalini ji, uh, if you would like to join, chip in. I guess the question is whether the art has changed us. Yes. Um, of course, the. Uh, sorry, Preeta, you were saying something. Yeah, no, that 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 is one part of the question. So I, I think we've heard many uh, mention that yes, art has widened our perspective about life in in one way or the other, and uh, that's definitely an inf a point of influence in that sense. What I was trying to more hear about is that has has have has it changed uh, based on your experiences of life? Has your view towards your art form changed? Oh. It's, uh, or has it been a mutual one? So Harvey uh, mentioned previously that for him personally, it has been a, a, a mutual one wherein it has influenced both ways. So uh, I was trying to see as to from your own experiences, have you felt that based on your life experiences, your approach, sure. to art, your connect with that art form, has it widened or has it changed its flavor, color? Sure. <laughs> sure, Preeta, yes, uh, totally. Uh, so, I mean, theoretically, art is a product and producer of society. And taking the same thing to personal life, like I would narrate two incidences. One, um, when I was playing a role, um, a very complex theater production, which my father had written, and I was playing the main uh, character. Um, I was about 20. And uh, that woman had um, a very interesting plot where uh, her experience of life was, uh, uh, she, she had de demanding, uh, demanding one day of her um, friend's life to, to spend with her and rest of the 29 days with with an, another woman. So, I mean, it was a very complex uh, triangle in a way uh, where uh, a woman was to portray and that role I had to do. Now, it was extremely difficult for me to one emote when my father, on my father's script, very young, and he used to come and, uh, you know, sit for the real service. Uh, when the director was, um, uh, you know, directing us. And uh, with my father being there, it was extremely difficult for me to emote um, a romantic sequence uh, with with her co-actor. And that kind of triggered a lot of uh, discussions with uh, when we would come home. And my dad was very matter of fact and saying, you are an actor at that moment and you have to emote in a certain way. So that totally transformed my relation. Though we had a very open relationship with my parents, we would discuss anything. But when it comes to practical, you know, uh, emoting in front of your parents, a uh, very intimate sequence, I, I was, I mean, it was very, very uh, interesting, but it opened up new relationships uh, uh, and understanding of each other in with trust and uh, much more more uh, vigor i would say uh, and the second one we we used to do a lot of street plays so again in a difficult context when um, performing on the streets you you come across all kinds of people and we believe that unless uh, you seen in in um, in the in the audience's eyes you never lie so if an actor, though I'm playing a character, I have to be truthful to what I'm saying, whether it's whatever the character has to say. I cannot just um, do a mediocre act. Uh, so that was um, uh, a great learning that in street play, when the audience is uh, 360 degrees around you, how do you emote? It's very different than being on stage and being in a, in a very um, safe place in that sense. On the street, you are out with people, you have to do, you have to emote. 
and uh, at that point of time also had great learning and understood what the the socio economic aspects what we were talking to the audience affected me so much that is it's now with me uh, in my development sector work so it's life changing every every uh, moment every incident i can you know narrate it on and on and on but i'll stick to this too but the life changing experiences thank you preeta for asking this yeah thank you for sharing your thoughts really appreciate that thank you yeah thank, thank you. you manvita no i think we have jay rishi josna shripati and sai and jayanti and um, we would like to wrap up in 10 minutes and certainly i think this has been such a beautiful meet and uh, we need to meet again <laughs> it calls for all of us to meet again and i'm so thankful to the net as well because i think it has been pretty you know <laughs> so jay rishi do you want to ask your questions thank you uh thank you ma'am so um I would like to ask uh, Mr. Marius. Okay, hi, Mr. Marius. So I would like to ask you that um, whenever I play the clarinet, I also play the clarinet. Whenever I play that instrument longer than usual, my mouth starts to get numb and it it gets extremely tired. So since you must be playing for a long period of time. Um, what technique do you use to? What technique do you recommend? for not getting tired at the end of playing uh, your session before answering uh, to your question and thank you for the question i have i have to ask you first uh, how many days are you practicing per week and um, and uh, for how long so uh, i don't really own a clarinet it was more for school reasons that i tend to get tired at the end of a long session but you what does long i mean <laughs> uh as i mean i would usually play for a period which is around 1 hour so um uh i guess so i remember um i would play for 1 hour uh for 2 days 2 to 3 days a week i believe because it was i played it in in school yeah, this is not bad to 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 three days per week so look the the bottom uh, line is uh, it builds up you know the strength it builds up so it it's called endurance so it just there is no magic uh, bullet i can uh, give you it's just uh, it's just effort you know and like uh, be committed and if you practice 2 3 4 days 1 hour the quality of the practice also is important you know i always uh, tell my students to warm up very well you know it's like in sports you never see these professionals uh, coming up on the pitch on the field uh, without being very well warmed up you can imagine what would happen uh, so it there are exercises scales i don't know uh, what you uh, how how you um uh, think of your practice how you build it up okay but the structure should be in my opinion scales first okay long sounds if possible the best endurance you obtain by doing long sounds and why because you don't need to play only one sound at a time you know you don't have to think of all the notes and the phrases and everything else so do uh, done correctly it will build up your muscles you know because we are not machines yeah we need the uh, uh you know it, it's a it's a ongoing process it's an organic uh, process of strengthening your your lips muscles and your uh, your diaphragm as well very important to think of the way you you take in air and how you blow the air off uh just i'm i'm sure your teacher told you that very important we always blow the air downwards is little bit counter and intuitive you know never think blowing the air upwards we blow the air downwards to achieve that nice beautiful compression you know uh yeah but the short answer is like keep doing it be committed and you will you it it comes in time you you get tired less and less and less and you will be able to sustain more and more and more uh, physical time of playing 
if that makes sense. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you very much. Yeah, pleasure. Yes, Rishi, you would like to ask something? Well, this may be off topic, but... Uh... Or else I think what we could do is, Rishi, Shripati, Sai, Josna, who haven't asked anything as of now, you want to ask a question which could be in a way connected so that they can ask, answer together. And then uh, we'll just wrap it up in 10 minutes. And uh, we think of another good day to meet. <clears throat> So, yeah, Shripati, who wants to come in first? Or uh, Sai? Shripati Josna? Where's Josna? Because she's it's pretty late for her in Australia. <laughs> yes. Yeah, fine. So when we talked about arts, everyone says it's like you know, it is, it, is, it, is, it makes them fearless, uh, happy, uh, in, it, it's inspiring. So we we hear about the good things that art, arts is bringing out. So what are the challenges that it brings you as a musician or as a performing musician or is it as an artist or as a writer? Uh, so because why I ask the question is sometimes I envy or it's a little bit of jealous I look at artists, you know. Uh, so when I listen to the music, or oh, the singer is actually blessed. Every day she's doing, every moment she or he is doing what he likes the most. So is there any challenge that the arts brings to the artist? Can I answer to that? Or did, did you have anyone specific in mind to answer? Uh, no, exactly. no, no, welcome, welcome. Please, Mr. Marius, go ahead. It's an ongoing challenge. It's... Uh, uh, for you as individual performer, okay, that's one thing. But imagine how it is when you uh, when you are in charge of uh, of a bunch of children, and you want to inspire them, and you want to. I mean, we can relate, Malini, right? Uh, when when you want to to uh, I mean, make the best out of this, and uh, and then uh, roadblocks in the way. <laughs> I don't no, know. The I, only thing that differs here, Mr. Marius, is when you said we can relate, yeah. yes, we can relate, but I have a choice to pick up whom I teach. Perhaps you don't have the choice to pick up whom you teach. That's the only difference. That makes my job see, so beautiful and so blissful. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I'm in the state of bliss. It is. Yes. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I agree with, uh, I, I had to address this, uh, by the way, I, I agree with uh, my good friend uh, uh, Harvey. Uh, uh, you are right about the, the educational purpose of art, you know, would be great if, if, um, if all art, and it, it must be educational. Each.